All right, so when I'm not imaging and I've got some free time on a Saturday, I am brewing beer. And right now, right now I'm working on a mango milkshake IPA. So it should come out right around 7% and uh, be ready to enjoy in the next couple weeks. All right, back to the, back to the program. Welcome back everybody, Aaron here with AV Astronomy. I've got a really special video for all of you astrophotographers, budding, starting astrophotographers, and even if you've been doing this for a while and you don't have a very strong handle on exposure and how that relates to what setting you should use, I have been working on an exposure matrix for you guys to help kind of give you a guideline and a good starting point. Uh, I think you'll find in, in a lot of situations, um, and I'll get in the specifics of that here in a minute, but th this guide should be very helpful to you. Uh, let's take, for instance, what I've been imaging with lately, my TPO 8-inch RC telescope. Uh, it has a focal ratio of f8. And if I was imaging a bright target such as the Orion Nebula at f8, I could go down to this chart here, and given the ISO choices here, I can go down and see what exposure setting I should use. So at f8, and I know with my camera, because I in a previous video that I did here, um, I did a variance test, ISO variance test on my camera, and found that in in most situations, not necessarily all, but in most situations, especially when I'm imaging at f8, it's most beneficial to me to be at ISO 3200. So I know at f8 on a bright target at ISO 3200. 160 seconds is going to be a good ballpark and a very solid ballpark starting point for me on that target. Now, let's also consider when you're doing something like Orion or other very high dynamic range targets with bright cores, you're going to want to do some blending of exposures. Uh, this exposure time here would get you 80% of the image or more properly exposed. Of course, that core is going to be blown out, at which point you'd want to jump way down on the exposure times you know we're talking 10 20 seconds to get the core but that's going to be on a more case by case basis and that's not really what this chart is for what this chart is for is you having either a lens or telescope and a digital slr and it can be modded or unmodded and just not really knowing where to start out i can say you know if you haven't done the iso variance test Anything between 800 and 1600 is solid. Uh, these, of course, the lower you go, the higher dynamic range, but also you, you do increase the color noise, believe it or not, in, in most cases in your images, and the exposure time, you know, more exposure time. That's less subframes per hour. And I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, you want to maximize the amount of subframes you get per hour. So if you're starting out into this new, I'd say play around with these features here. Check out my ISO variance video to see how to test your camera and see what ISO is going to be the best overall given its dynamic range capability and given the ISO variance or invariance of your camera. Okay, that's in another video. That's going to there's going to be a link in the description for that. I also have a link in the description for this document here. I have a shareable link where you can download this PDF that way you can have it on your phone so when you're imaging at night, you know, you can just Pull it up on your phone there, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got you've got some great starting points for ISO and shutter speed given the the aperture you use. Um, you know, another example here, if uh, I was imaging with my uh, Maxitom Newtonian, now that scope is f 4.9, and you notice here I did full. These are full stop increments, starting at 1.4. Now, if you have a telescope that has an focal ratio that doesn't fit these numbers exactly that's okay you're gonna have to kind of go middle ground here like for instance for me 
being f4.9 with my maxitopnetonian and let's say I was going after a moderate target here uh, at ISO 3200 if I was at f4 it'd be about an 80 second subframe but if I was at f6 5.6 160 so being that 4.9 is pretty much in the middle that's where I would say start you know split the difference and you know maybe go for a 110 120 second subframe at that focal ratio at 3200 and see what you get now these tests were done in a Bortle 5 that's a yellow zone location and if you're not familiar with what your lighting situation is when it comes to light pollution you should really check out this website here and if you navigate on over to the section where you put in your city or zip code you can see exactly based on your location what your light pollution situation is like uh, but even without this if you're in the city chances are your border border seven eight maybe even a nine okay and you're likely if you're imaging in the city doing deep sky uh, photography using narrow band filters um, with narrow band you are definitely safe to use these exposure settings here but I would I would say that you would probably be able to go even longer on some of these exposures uh, 20 to 30 percent longer uh, same thing if you're at a really dark site let's say you're you're in a rural area a true dark site portal one portal two um, and these exposure settings would certainly apply and give you really good results but you'll find in darker areas the histogram is going to shift more to the left especially if it's a if it's a smaller target um, I don't know that I've really talked in that much with histograms but histograms evaluate the whole scene guys so it's not just looking at the target and the light emitted from that it's looking at the entire scene and the the data that you see on the histogram whether it be you know all the way to the left is the darker side of the data and of course all the way to the right is the brighter side of the data well if most of it is all the way to the left like in this example here uh, what I tend to go for is about a quarter of the way from the left I know that if I'm a, around a quarter of the way from the left I'm in a good spot for stretching my data and knowing that I got a decent amount of data so that's just something to keep in mind when you're imaging in a darker site using these settings but I, I still believe these will apply really to most situations um, the only area you might have some trouble is if you are imaging in a city with no light pollution filters whatsoever you're gonna find that a lot of these are just you're gonna you're gonna have a blown out image so you're gonna need some sort of light suppression you know, CLS filter or um, Optolong L enhance filter luminance pro something that's gonna cut back in that light pollution and then these these settings should still apply uh, pretty well for you that's really it in a nutshell I, I wanted to uh, I've been working on this for a while I wanted to get this out here to you guys so you would have a great starting point and uh, and I think for most cases these settings should work quite well for you but I think you'll find that you know given your your border scale situation what camera you have you may need to make some small adjustments but at least going forward you can look at a chart look at the focal ratio of what your telescope or lens is choose an ISO and bam you've got a good starting point for imaging so guys that is it for today that concludes the video if you like what you saw here you felt like you got some good information out of this please give me a thumbs up don't forget to hit the notification bell and the like button so you don't miss out on any future videos and until next time clear skies <laughs>